The Coal Falls Dam construction project began in 1909. The project was abandoned in 1913, with only a third of the dam completed. The dam placed the city of Prince Albert in debt till 1965. Three million dollars was spent on the dam, or about 62 million today. The debt created by the dam almost pushed the city of Prince Albert into bankruptcy. In your estimation, what was the most outstanding engineering feat of La Colle Falls? Well, the, the fact is that La Colle Falls is an Amberson dam, a, a specific type of dam that hasn't been built in maybe 80 years. And this has the advantage that it's not submerged. Like the ones that still exist or that haven't been changed, they're all underwater, they're all submerged or they've been taken down. This is a clean, empty dam. And that makes it so unique and the most interesting to be promoted as a, a heritage site. Why was the dam based on the Bassano design? Uh, well, it's, the curious thing is that originally uh, Charles Mitchell did not want to build that kind of dam. It was the consultants that were called in, Smith, Kerry and Chass, that uh, promoted the idea to use an Amberson dam like the one that was built in, in, uh, in, the Bassa, in Bassano. And uh, that's still a strange thing to me, in fact, that they want to do it. The Amberson type of dam was in at the time. It was kind of brand new. The first one was built in 1905 or something, a few years around there. So everybody promoted that. It was the beginning of reinforced concrete. It was light, it was easy. Uh, and that's why they promoted it, I think. Uh, maybe there's other reasons that we we'll, won't find written down somewhere, but that was kind of the reason. And in the end, Charles Mitchell went with it. Do you know how many people worked on this project? Uh, well, there's one figure, but I would keep it for the moment, say several hundred. So did the building of the dam have any newer technology in it? The main thing, of course, is the, that they use, the use of reinforced concrete. Uh, they had been using concrete for a long time, for a couple of thousand years or something like concrete, but this was time to reinforce it and that was brand new. And of course, the, the next thing is that the dam is curved, has curves, and that is extraordinary that they could build reinforcement into a curved surface. And that makes it another point to be unique and to be uh, preserved as a heritage building, as an industrial site, is that fact. Were there any special provisions set aside to, for shipping? Well, let's say, to begin with, in the summer it was kind of easy because they had the stern wheeler from the city of PA that could, that they had a barge and they could bring in uh, concrete, uh, concrete in bags and, and coal and everything in the summertime. Now, of course, in the winter is another matter. And that's where they just used teamsters, local teamsters that went up and down. It was like chain work, you know. It would have been better if they had used uh, a small railway, uh, narrow gauge or even regular gauge, but that would have been a lot more expensive, of course. So they worked with teams of horses and they did that to bring material on and they used them also on the site itself. So if the dam was actually built, do you think it would have paid for itself? It would have paid for itself over the years. Uh, let's say, no, no doubt about it, I think. It's just a matter that the initial investment money wasn't there. Because projects like that were built at that time by the tents. And they all still there. They are still all still there if they're in a reasonable, good location and they, they've been changed. But I think everything that I read about them, everybody's happy that they were built. So the one in PA would have made money. 
maybe not what they first said, but it would have worked. Was the location ideal? Uh, the location that they use now uh, is not that ideal. And in, in my personal opinion, the original location, which was like 800 meters upstream, half a mile upstream, was the best location in the whole scheme of things that Prince Albert wanted to build. Were there any indications for other reasons other than World War One why the dam was stopped? Uh, of course, the main reason uh, was that they ran out of money uh, by 1913 and then they wanted to revive the, 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 the project uh, in, let's say, 1914, they tried. And of course, the, the First World War intervened and all the money that they needed had to come from London, England. So it didn't happen. And then after the war, they tried a couple of times again to revive it, but of course the dam, what was built, was getting already too old and nobody wanted to take it on again and they tried then to sell it to SAS Power at some point. So, well, it died because of a reason, several reasons, one after the other, it never got finished. <laughs>